All right, good morning, everyone, and uh, thank you for having me here. It's an honor to be here uh, to accept the nomination for the Nobel Prize in Charles Kernighan's place. Uh, I guess I just said his name. Um, uh, Charles Kernighan is the executive director of the National Labor Committee for Worker and Human Rights. Um, and I believe that he deserves the Nobel Prize strictly because of his work with the anti sweatshop movement. Um, to set a little background, in 1995, there was no movement in the U.S. Today, there's a coalition of religious, student, and labor groups whose prime objective is to increase awareness of the conditions of millions of workers and factories in developing countries. Um, recently, actually ten, uh, 12 years ago, he was interviewed by George N. Anderson, who is an ed associate editor of America, which is a Catholic magazine. Uh, he said in a report he did there that uh, the factories were always hidden behind high walls with barbed wire and watched over by armed guards, which, I mean, here in the United States, we have the privilege of going to whatever job we could we physically choose and we choose when we go and when we leave for most people in sweatshops that doesn't happen you stay there for however long they want you there um, in the early 90s companies were supposed to adopt a code of conduct ensuring safe humane treatment for all of its workers even overseas but this code of conduct didn't deal with women's rights or below minimum wage uh, payments. Also, the companies could monitor themselves, which might not seem like such a bad thing, but we all know how easy it is just to check mark. Yeah, this happens. That's cool. People aren't, you know, in poor working conditions. So with all this uh, going on, the stage is now set, and Kernighan can now begin his work. Uh, he actually began his work in the early 90s at El Salvador in the, in, in the Honduras. Um, he actually had a project with the Committee for the Defense of Human Rights, which was just a local uh, human rights organization in El Salvador. There he uh, surveyed 1,000 maquia, which a maquia is just a, a worker that produced goods exclusively for the United States. He found that 13% were children as young as 12 years old that were forced to work all night long. 27% were physically beaten or had witnessed an act of violence. So, instead of shutting down these companies, he challenged them and he asked them that changes be made. Well, changes were made, but they were only baby steps. In El Salvador, he did a campaign centered on GAP. He changed a work environment that issued locks in the restrooms, no clean water, and teenagers doing overtime in dangerous work environments to no locks on the restrooms, clean work environments, and workers actually being able to form unions. At first, GAP tried to pull out of the um, El Salvador, but he said, no, no, you need to let them stay because the working conditions are bad. Having absolutely no job at all is worse. Now, probably the case that makes him deserve the Nobel Prize the most would be his Walmart case and the case he had with Kathy Lee Gifford, which, you know, Regis and Kathy Lee, I see a couple people going, ah, yeah. A couple years ago, Kathy Lee had a clothing line in Walmart, which is the biggest retailer in the world. In um, 1996, he challenged her that some of her clothes were made in sweatshops. Kathy denied all these clothes and threatened to sue him if he ever brought it up again. Well, because of her overreaction, the media picked up on this. And she, and they began questioning her, you know, just small questions at first, and then progressively, you know, where is your stuff made? Where are your clothes made? All he and his colleagues did was present her with facts, and the public did the rest. Eventually, she stopped talking publicly about it. Walmart hired a big public relations firm to represent her to make sure that everyone, that this whole state, this whole ordeal stayed hush hush. Well, it didn't stay hush hush, and so and, and so Kathy Lee and her representatives wanted to attack the main source of the problem, which she felt was Charles Cardigan. So she set up an, a meeting with him. She wanted to, she and her representatives wanted to meet 
to figure out where exactly he was getting this preposterous um, information from. So he brought in uh, Wendy Diaz from Honduras, who was a teenager working in a factory that made some of her apparel. Wendy was 13 when she started working, and she was 15 when the meeting was set up. She would be 27 now. Wendy described some of her living conditions. She described that she had to live in a one-room hovel with 11 others, only earning only 31 cents an hour. That's no money for food. Humiliation at work if you made something wrong. It was literally thrown back in your face, and you were yelled at and told to do it again. You weren't allowed to use the restrooms. You were out of work at sometimes, you know, early 9 p.m., sometimes later. You lived in a dangerous neighborhood. Kids would run home together screaming and singing songs so that they wouldn't get raped and murdered. When Wendy was finished speaking, Kathy Lee, with tears streaming down her face, apologized to her. Because of this meeting, Kathy Lee signed an agreement saying that she would never again tolerate sweatshops, that her workers would be paid living wages, and that her factories would be open to inspection by local religious groups and humane rights organizations. That all seems well and good, right? But as we know, Walmart is the center of all evil, <laughs> and they wouldn't allow any of this to be upheld. Charles Kernigan ne never attacked anyone. He merely just wanted to shed some light on some conditions and make sure other people were aware of this to call for changes. Because, as I said before, even though conditions are terrible, it would be a lot worse if they didn't have a job to begin with. I'd like to thank everyone for their nomination of Charles Kernigan. Thank you for your time. And uh, that is why I believe Charles Kernigan deserves the Nobel Prize.